Well, welcome back. Work, working, work continues on the Carmel Mission. Today I'm going to be painting this front of the mission and also the stained glass window. And that window, it looks a little, uh, the architecture on it looks a little off, which it is, but it was damaged in an earthquake several years ago and architects determined that it would destroy the window to try to repair and straighten it up. It was architecturally sound. There it was no, no danger of it you know, falling or hurting anybody or anything. So they left the, the window and it's just skewed. It's shifted, but it's okay, so that was the final determination and so every time I paint it I have to explain to people that, that the window is actually that way. It's not that I've painted it off. Painted it crooked, but that's the way the window is. And that's part of the charm of this old mission. It's just it's a beautiful, beautiful mission. If you're ever in near Carmel, California and in the Monterey Peninsula this is just a must see. The, the grounds are beautiful and it's just there's a back courtyard on the other side of this wall that's really really pretty with a big fountain and in the spring there's wisteria growing back there. It's just a beautiful quiet tranquil setting. And this is I've saved my color mixtures that we were using in the previous session. I'm painting the shadow first. I'm not going to worry about the doorway right now. Painting this, I'm adding a little bit of ultramarine blue plus white into this mixture just to make it a tiny bit cooler so it drops back. This whole surface of this wall is in shadow. Now again, I'm using my mall stick. It's a, about six feet long. It has a hook that I just hook over the top of my easel and I can rest my, my wrist or lower arm against it. And that steadies my hand in order to make lines and do the detail and stuff. I want to smooth that transition between this the dark where those two walls meet. I just want to smooth that a little bit. And this is in the background so it can be a little bit softer. And then this window is there's a the border around it also casts a shadow. And now this mixture is some is white plus I'll, a little bit of my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue plus one part of alizarin crimson plus white, plus a little bit of cadmium orange in there, and just a tiny touch of cadmium yellow medium. Just makes a nice, warm, kind of an adobe color or limestone color. Just a really soft, pretty color. You add, if you had more white into it, you'd get a really creamy white. This shadow here actually kind of comes, the tower is coming across and it kind of, looking at my reference material, I have it on my laptop on the tabaret to the right of my easel. And this shadow again is, the edge is soft because it's a long way from the object that is casting it. And it kind of curves a little bit there. 
The shadow is got a little harder edge because it's closer to the border of the window that's, ca that's casting the shadow. Now this part of the window in here is dark. This Again, I'm bracing on the mall stick. These mall sticks, it's made for, actually it's a hook that's made for lifting clothes off of a tall clothes rack, like in a big department store or something like that, clothing store. And we bought these in, in uh, Carlsbad, California. Actually, I guess the container store was in San Diego. We lived in Carlsbad by the sea. But we went down to San Diego and saw these, and Jack saw it, and he said, oh my gosh, that would make an absolutely perfect mall stick. So we got a couple. That was in 1998. And one of my readers on my blog emailed me not too long ago and said they're still available. And she said they're 1995, and that's exactly the very same price that we paid for that in 1998. So that that's a pretty good deal. Now what I'm doing is on the back edge of that side of this mission window, so I'm making that a little bit bluer on the part near the the stained glass and that just makes that brought back. Can see up here how that works. And I washed in that red part. That's a wash of alizarin crimson plus liquid. And that over the white canvas just gives that a real luminosity that just gives the feeling of that stained glass. I may have to come back later and glaze a little mud over it just to tone it down just a little bit. But I'm going to get the painting finished first because once I get all the bright flowers and everything in the foreground that may not appear so bright. So I'm just going to wait until I finish the painting and then I can always go back and glaze over that. Now since that red is dry I have a few little brush strokes that didn't go where I want them. So I can just take a clean brush and lift off my paint off of that red. And it cleans up my brush strokes and doesn't bother my window. And that's the nice thing. When I do my sketch in an oil wash, like these trees and stuff, it's kind of a deep, deep purple. And again, that's my mud plus liquid. I let it dry overnight before I start painting. And then that allows me, if I make any, if I paint over something that I say, oops, I didn't want to paint over that, I still have my sketch. Now this side of the window is still dark, but I'm making it a little bit lighter than the other side because it's getting a little reflected light onto this part of the, so it's not quite as dark as the other side. I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush and we'll make that outer border of the make that a little bit lighter. I'll bring a little dark in here close to that. Okay. Now I'll just come in and again I'm bracing on the mall stick. So that steadies my hand. And if you notice, I'm holding the brush out toward the end. That actually, even though as odd as this may sound, that actually gives you more control over the brush and you can keep it steadier than if you hold it up here and try to do it like this. I think that's one of the hardest things to learn in painting. But if they make those long handles for a reason on those brushes. And that's to give you more control. It 
it's a little bright, but I can come back and make it a little bit darker. Don't want it quite that bright. Now the other side will be because it's catching more light. This side we want to be a little bit darker. Now I can take my background color and there will be a little shadow, even though this is in shadow, there's actually even going to be more of a shadow underneath this. Now this little brush, now this is one I don't hold just right at the end if I'm making some fine detail. But what I can do is I brace my hand against the unpainted part of the canvas. And again, my sketch is dry, so that's no problem to touch it there. And then I use, let me get a nice point on that. I use this to make that little darker edge along the bottom of that. going to be just a little bit lighter right there. Enough paint on my brush. Okay. Just, this is a matter of cleaning up. And kind of working back and forth. This again is a bright brush. It has a square tip on it. And that allows me, I can just work around this with that edge. It gives me a lot of control. And yet if I want a larger stroke, then I can do a larger area with the, the broad edge of that. Okay, let's do the rest of this. I'm just going to brace on the building here. Now I need to use need to use my mall stick. Get a better angle on the brush. I'll do that at the end. This is going to be a little darker here. Looking at my reference material. A little darker here. Now this other's in sh in bright in the sunlight, so this is going to be lighter. shadows on this side. The nice thing about mixing all that paint is I don't have to worry about going back and matching all of my mission. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. All of my mission colors I mixed. I mixed quite a bit, so I have plenty to do the entire mission without having to remix any of the paint. This one needs to be a little bit narrower right there. Come back in with this larger brush. there's our mission window. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos and I do hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also have a blog. The description is in the, or the link 
is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of the video, as well as the address of my official website. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and again, I thank you for watching.